Retro Deck or Emu Deck? What's the difference? Which one should you choose? Pretty common question on Reddit, and today we're gonna deep dive what these two tools have in common and where one outshines the other. While I am an Emu Deck user, as apparent by my many videos here on the channel, I spent a great deal of time with Retro Deck to prepare for this video and want to give the most unbiased advice possible. In the end, only you can decide which will be best for you. Let's get to it. Stick around. Emulation doesn't get much better than on Steam Deck. So many emulators, front ends, installers, and utilities, it is a great time to get into the emulation scene. In this video, we're not going to talk about ROMs or BIOS files or really get deep into the meat of emulation per se, but rather look at the current two reigning champs of emulation helper apps, EmuDeck and RetroDeck. On the surface, they both do roughly the same thing. They take all the work out of setting up emulation en masse for your Steam Deck. Now, if you saw my recent video on EmuDeck Demystified, you'll know that tool sets like this are much more than just simple batch files that install emulators for you. It doesn't seem like there could be a lot of disparity between two similar products that largely do the same exact things, but Believe it or not, both products have some pluses and minuses, and we are going to look at them all. I spent a great deal of time creating a chart comparing and contrasting the two products, so let's start with a blow-by-blow -blow discussion of the two with that 30,000-foot view in mind, then we can dig into some of the more subjective things that might appeal to some people more than others. As you can see, we have 26 topics to cover, so we'll touch each of them briefly. Color coding shows green if the product is superior and red if there's a deficiency. Even scores result in no color at all. Installers. Each one is a tool you must install before using. RetroDeck works as a flat pack, meaning you can super easily grab it from the Discover store, and that's pretty cool. Any deck doesn't require a degree in Linux, just download a desktop file and run it from the desktop. How many emulators does each one support? With 21, EmuDeck has a very nice lead on RetroDeck 13. RetroDeck is always adding more, so I expect in the future these numbers will end up in parity. BIOS checkers are great. They ensure that the BIOS files present are actually the right ones. Named correctly from the right region will actually work when you try to use the emulator. EmuDeck has a very basic but aesthetically pleasing checker, while RetroDeck wins this one with a landslide, showing more information and being presented very, very well. CHD Compressor is a tool that takes BinQ and other disk image formats and compresses them up to 70%, allowing you to store a lot more games with the same amount of space. Both EmuDeck and RetroDeck have this tool, so neither is a winner on this point. Cloud saves allow you to store emulated game saves in the cloud to be synced to other devices. RetroDeck doesn't have any support, and some of EmuDeck's functionality appears to be paywalled through Patreon. As such, support for this gives EmuDeck a nod, but the implementation sort of puts them on even ground. Disparate systems require disparate controls, and both products provide you with a per-emulator configuration pre-made for your enjoyment. This makes both tools big winners, as doing this manually really sucks. EmuDeck probably has a slightly more fleshed out implementation, but there is no clear winner here. Decky plugin is unique to EmuDeck and allows you to use Decky Loader to pull up a button configuration on a per emulator basis. While I don't use it personally, it's really a cool thing to have when you're getting started. Gyro support is also unique to EmuDeck, allowing gyro support to be added to Switch, Wii, and Wii U emulation. If these platforms are in your emulation stable, EmuDeck gets a solid nudge. Import and export tools allow you to move and offload all the important stuff to an external storage device, like a hard drive, to protect your hard-earned saves and data. EmuDeck has a basic set of tools, though there is plenty of room for improvement, but alas, RetroDeck does not. I wouldn't call this a showstopper, but it's definitely worth mentioning. ROM import tools allow you to take an external collection of ROMs and BIOS files and integrate them into these products. EmuDeck has this, but RetroDeck doesn't. I was perfectly happy to do this manually, so I wouldn't call this a deal breaker either. 
quick global settings let you set tons of setting up front without reaching into the emulator or the tools themselves. Both RetroDeck and EmuDeck have these features, but I would say that EmuDeck gets a slight nudge here as the presentation is better, in my opinion, and there are more settings that a lot of people would find useful. Screen resolution settings. This is front and center in EmuDeck, but if they exist in RetroDeck, I didn't see them. This would be most useful for those looking to plug the deck into a TV or monitor for emulation play. This will mean more to some than others, but EmuDeck does get the point here. Retro achievements are like awards and trophies, achievements from Steam and Xbox where you get rewarded for performing certain tasks in your favorite old games. Both products support this and God bless them both for doing so, no winner here. Migrate Install, a feature that allows you to move an existing install to a new location like SD card to SSD or vice versa. No winner here as both have this feature. 95% of you are not subscribers and while I am humbled and honored to have over 15,000 subs, wouldn't you like to make that unsub number go down? This will get the channel more exposure by YouTube and you would have my continued thanks and support. Power Tools, another decky plugin that gives you more control over the hardware during emulation. With SteamOS 3.5, we need this a little bit less. So while EmuDeck has it and RetroDeck doesn't, a win doesn't necessarily get a point here. Auto saves are when you end your emulation session and a save state is made automatically so you pick right back up where you left off. That's not something I'm big into, but since both EmuDeck and RetroDeck have the feature, you're covered either way. Cheats are important to a lot of folks, and while both packages technically support them, since RetroArch is the tool that they both use, RetroDeck has it built into the UI, while EmuDeck does not. Probably not enough to give a point, but certainly is nod worthy. Rewind and fast forward features allow you to recover from a badly timed death or skip ahead these long, boring cutscenes. Again, RetroArch is the tool that provides this, and both use it. It's a bit more front and center on RetroDeck, where on EmuDeck, you'll have to do a bit of work. I will give a point to RetroDeck on this one. Paywall. <sighs> Money rears its ugly head once again. Both products are considered free, but EmuDeck does have a Patreon path that has proven a bit controversial in the past, and some things like early access are paywalled behind it. RetroDeck has an early access version too, and it is not paywalled. Point to RetroDeck on this one, despite my acknowledge that hard work deserves reward, it is hard to pull this off in an emulation environment. Scrapers are tools that bring metadata and media like box shots, artwork, preview videos, and more to your emulation experience. There are two major services and both of them are supported by EmuDeck and RetroDeck. No clear winner here. Theme support is usually applied to launchers like ESDE, Pegasus, and Steam ROM Manager, and since EmuDeck supports more launchers than RetroDeck, it is also offers more theme opportunities. A nod to EmuDeck here. Multi-part ISO checker is available in RetroDeck, but not in EmuDeck. Supposedly, this checks the integrity of your multi-disc game sets and makes sure they are good to go. I don't have any scenarios to test here, so we'll give the point to Retro Deck just based on it has it. It used to be that the biggest selling point of Retro Deck was the fact that it is a centralized storage solution that was very clean and doesn't scatter stuff all over the place. As such, cleanup and uninstall was cleaner. However, during my research, EmuDeck appears to actually clean up better. RetroDeck left behind a lot of residual config stuff that actually impacted the ability to reinstall it later. Full points to EmuDeck, believe it or not. Bravo, though, to RetroDeck for centralizing stuff. If it cleaned up its uh, config stuff a little more, it would have taken the point. Now, this last point may be a bit subjective, but bear with me. When it comes to UI UX accessibility, rarely does this sort of thing happen well by accident. While I don't know the story with these products, many larger projects bring in a UX UI specialist to help. Let's be honest, EmuDeck as an app is clean. It's well laid out, and it wasn't always, and it's easy to find stuff. RetroDeck is loaded with nested menus that feel very old school DOS-like. If you've ever set up a RetroPie machine, this may feel familiar to you. 
It isn't that Retro Deck isn't functional, it's just not as functional. It is easy to dismiss this gap by saying once everything is set up, ESDE is ESDE, right? Shouldn't be a big deal, but when it comes to weekly tasks like upgrading MUs and configs, ME Deck is just so much cleaner and easier. Word on the street is, though, that Retro Deck has a big UI update coming, but it isn't here yet, and I have to compare with what I have. We'll reevaluate later, but right now, ME Deck gets the win here. So what do I think? Both tools are fantastic and meet an end goal of simplified emulation on Steam Deck. ME Deck looks and feels more mature, and it will continue to be what I recommend to beginners. Retro Deck has some strong points, like the BIOS checker, which really is important, and those more comfortable in a slightly more um, retro interface will find Retro Deck perfectly serviceable. EmuDeck has a few flaws, some of it around the administration of the product, such as Patreon and early access, disclaimer, I am a patron for the product, and the fact that it is growing rather quickly. We've had a few stumbles that neutered a lot of people's setup in the past, and it is expanding into other platforms, which hopefully will not deter the core development for Steam Deck in favor of Android or other platforms. None of this stops me from giving a nod to EmuDeck as the overall winner today. Tomorrow, things could easily change directions, and you can be sure I'll be watching out every step of the way. That's going to do it for this one. Hey, if you like what you saw, hit that like button, share it with a friend. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.